Okay, we're talking about the calculus of exponential and logarithmic functions. And take a look at this page. We have things organized here. You see up at the top we have natural logarithms and there's the derivative of the natural log of x and the integral of natural log of x. And then right below that we have base b logarithms, the derivative and integral of base b logarithms. And if we scroll down, you'll see we have the derivative and integral of base e exponents and the derivative and integral of base b exponents, where base b could be any number. So this is a, a reference sheet that's organized, and it's not filled in. You see, these are all blank, but as we work through the theory, we'll come back to this page and fill it in. And then at the end, you'll have this nice reference of all of these concepts. So with that said, let's get started. We'll begin with this function, y equals e to the x. And it turns out that this function has an absolutely amazing property. And that's this. We can say that if y is equal to e to the x, then the derivative of that, dy dx, is equal to e to the x. How about that? The function is its own derivative. And what that means is if you were to graph this function, and you know what the graph looks like, y equals e to the x, looks something like this. It's zooming up here to the right, and it's asymptotic to y equals 0 down here. And it crosses the axis right here at, at y equals 1. And at that point, it has a value of 1. The function has a value of 1. But if we were to draw a little tiny segment of the graph, a little infinitely small piece of the graph, and think about the slope, the slope right there would also be 1. And if we were to come over here to another point, say over here at x equals 1, and find the value of the function at that point. And at, at that point, the value would be, of course, 2.718, or e. At that point, the function has a value of 2.718. But the slope right there at that point is also 2.718. And at any point on this curve, the value of the function and the slope of the function are the same. If we were to come way over here, on the negative side, right here, the function has a very small value and it also has a very small slope. The value of the function and the slope of the function are the same at every single point. And this function is the only function, well this function and a constant multiple of this function, those are the only functions that have this property of being their own derivative. Now, with that said, we can come back to our reference page here and fill this in. Find the place where it says natural base exponents, and let's fill that in. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, we can work a couple of examples, and these aren't that hard. Here we're told that f of x is equal to 3 e to the x. Find f prime of x. Well, the 3 as a constant multiple there just sits there, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the derivative of 3e e to the x is 3e e to the x. And then we're told to find f prime of 2.5, so that would just be 3e e to the 2.5. Not too hard. And if you punch that into the calculator, it's approximately 36.55. And in the, in the second example, we're told to find uh, the derivative of e to the 8x. So if f of x is equal to e to the 8x, then f prime of x is going to be found with the simple application of the chain rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so the derivative of e to the 8x will be e to, e to the 8x times 8, because we have to take the derivative of the inner function there. And we would commonly write this as 8e to the 8x. So that's just a pretty straightforward application of the chain rule. Now, one more point to make right here. Since the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, it immediately follows that the integral of e to the x is e to the x. And of course, we need to put in the plus c, the constant of integration. And we can do a simple example with this. We're told find the integral from 2 to 4 
of e to the x dx. And this is really easy. We just need to integrate this function and the integral is just e to the x. So this will be this will be equal to e to the x evaluated from 2 to 4. So that's just going to be e to the fourth minus e squared. And you could leave your answer in that form or if you needed a decimal number you could put it into the calculator and it's approximately 47.2. But now we can take this fact that the integral of e to the x is e to the x and we can come back to this page and fill that in. The integral of e to the x dx is e to the x plus c. And I realize now that I am, um, when I wrote this I left out the dx there so let me just fix that. This should say the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x plus c. So just want to get the notation correct there. That is correct. And this calculation down here is correct too.